Australia commemorations risk loving Gallipoli to death last Sunday morning. The multicultural Sydney suburb of Merrick Villa was transported back in time 100 years. Camel and light horse cavalry filled the main street emptied of cars, and men in uniform marched to the town hall, while local residents stood on the footpaths waiting them on. The parade, which included local bands, choirs and school children, was in memory of the 6,500 local men who enlisted to fight on foreign shores in World War I. A new WW1 memorial was commissioned. An exhibition about the war was staged at the local library, even a special edition winged victory beer went on sale at a local brewer. There has been an enormous amount of preparation for this event over the past two years, Merrick Villa Mayor Mark Gardner told the BBC, explaining that a third of the local men who enlisted in WW1 were killed or wounded. Ceremonies like this one have been repeated across Australia to mark the centenary of the landing of Australian and New Zealand Army Corps and Zacks on the Turkish shores of Gallipoli on April 25, 1915. And Zac Day is arguably Australia's most important national occasion. Every year, Australians commemorate the anniversary of that first campaign, and at the same time commemorate all the military conflicts that followed. But it is Gallipoli that holds a special place in Australian hearts. Many believe it was here Australians proved themselves the equal of any in the world, heralding the young nation's emergence onto the world stage. Dawn vigils are held everywhere from the smallest country town to the nation's capital. Later in the day, there are military parades while the afternoons are traditionally given over to drinking and playing the gambling game of two-up. But this year is different. The Australian government is spending a dollars 145 m dollars 113 m pounds 76 m on Anzac commemorations including building an Australian Remembrance Trail on TH.